A slot machine is nothing but a machine. The real old ones, and of course, I may be getting older, but this is even before my time. They had the 10 stop machines, which was a thousand combinations on the machine. You have three reels and you have 10 stops on each one. 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand. And then when I came in, everything was running 20 stop. So you have 20 times 20 times 20, you had 8,000 combinations. What these guys would do is each reel had a hole. They would plug that hole so that person could never hit the jackpot. So that's how they would change the odds. What's up, guys? Dave. Hey, Joel, how Good are to you? see you, man. Good Zach. Well, I think you know this I guy. Hey, how you doing? Long time no see. Chris, I want, we were talking about plugging. Okay. And Dave said he thinks about 75% of the machines were plugged. And he's going to show us an example of how to do it. So this is a Mills mechanism. I'm looking for some plugs. Where would the plugs be? They put them on the disc. Yeah, this is this kind of got an oval type like plug here. A lot of them have the big round plugs. They also what they call gaps. So they would put a gap inside where these teeth are. They groove in. They put like a washer with a nut on it. So if you were gonna hit this bell or jackpot bar, it would actually skip over it. Machines don't have to be rigged. It's kind of like a blackjack table. The built-in numerical percentage is for the house. And you have a machine like a castle front that came from the factory, anywhere from 70 to 75 percent payback to the customer. Now you go in a little bit later than that, around the 40s, they get up to 80 and 85. Now, then you get into high tops after the Second World War. Now you're getting up into anywhere from roughly 85 percent up to 95, 96, 97, depending on the combination. You don't have to cheat them. And most operators did not cheat them. Where you saw the cheating was in the little stores. Mills, Jennings, the such, they sold them to people. They didn't have to be operators. So if you had a mom and pop grocery or an AM, PM, or the such as that, you could buy your own slot machines and put them in except in the bigger cities where if you bought your own slot machines, the next day you wouldn't have the front of your store left. It would be, be blown off. In the small cities, they could buy them. And they're greedy. The little stores were greedy, but they were also somewhat stupid because they would put a jumper on, let's say, the third bar because they didn't want the jackpots to hit. So what happens is not only did the jackpot not hit, two bells in a bar, two plums in a bar, two oranges in a bar didn't hit, and the machine was so tight that nobody would, would play it. They'd play it one time, lose all their money, and not come back. Now, if you take the bar off the third reel, you not only lose the jackpots, you lose one position on that reel. What that automatically does is increase the propensity of people hitting the other position. In other words, now you've got 10 times 10 times nine. Now you've got 900. The every other payout on the machine is jacked up 10%, and the people can't understand. They, they put a jumper on it, and it, and it takes off uh, a bar, but yet the machine's paying out more than it was paying out before. They don't understand it, but they don't think.